Hey guys, oh my gosh, welcome back to another video. Hopefully this change of scenery is befitting. I decided to change up my scenery. I am in like the clubhouse of my apartment and it's so cute in here and I just felt like it would be the perfect little setting for my video. Today I'm here with another video. I'm so excited about this video because I am gonna be talking about not only marriage, but I'm gonna be talking about getting married young. Oh my gosh. If you don't know me, my name is Shayla Avery and I am 24 years old. I just turned 24 in February. Um, and so I am pretty young. Um, I got married actually in my senior year of college and we got um, engaged, I believe my junior year. So I, we got married pretty young, about 20 and 21. Um, so not like 18 or anything, but it was fairly young. And trust me, we had our sh fair shares of like difficult times. And I just want to get on here and encourage you if you're thinking about getting married young. And if you are married young, let's just talk. Definitely. Let's just talk because if you are married young and you you know are currently in your early 20s and you're married you know that's a whole nother ball game um i am also currently pregnant i am about 21 weeks pregnant right now so that's a whole nother thing that i'm gonna have so much to talk about in the future but for now we're talking about marriage so Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so specifically the thing I wanna talk about today about getting married young is just the five things that I would leave you if you're considering about getting, if you're considering getting married young, let's say you met your high school sweetheart and you are going into college and you're 18 and you're thinking about getting married, that was me and my husband now, trust me. Um, and I just wanna give you some tips that you should really take into consideration if you're thinking about doing this. It's such a huge step and I just wanna make sure that anybody who's thinking about this is thinking about the full picture and I wanna make sure that I'm able to share my knowledge. So the number one thing that I am going to say, if you're not Christian, I'm sorry, but that is how I live my life and that's what I base my life on. So the number one thing I would say is confirm with God that this is the one. I feel like oftentimes we can get in our head about like why we believe somebody is the one and why we think that this person is for us and this person is the best person on earth and couldn't imagine my life without us. All of that could be true, but you wanna make sure that you're praying about it and you wanna make sure that God is on your side too. Because this, if this is something that was not in God's plan, trust me, it will not work out even though it may start off great, even though the love may be there, love fades, so you have to have more backing than that you need the backing of community and, and god and all of it on your side because marriage is hard enough and you need somebody or something to turn to when those times get hard so that's the number one thing i would say is confirm with god pray 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 without ceasing about this i would say a couple of months before you're thinking about getting married i would just say pray all the time about just God, if this is the one, give me a sign here. Let me know. Like, if this isn't of you, like, let me know. Just be open. Just because you're in love with this person doesn't mean that they're the person that you should spend the rest of your life with. And I think that's a hard reality that some of us have to face, but it's true. And like, love does not mean anything if you're out of the will of God. So that's the number one thing that I would make sure that I'm doing. Number two, I would make sure that I'm getting married for the right reasons. As I said, love is everything, right? Like I, being in love is the most amazing feeling ever, but it's not all about love. And there's so many other things that are so important when it comes to marrying someone. Like you need to make sure that you match and you're compatible on more than just one thing. And that one thing being that you love each other. That's not enough. You need to make sure that you agree on how you wanna raise your kids, what religion you wanna raise your kid on, where you guys would like to live, what you see for your future. Do you wanna be a stay at home mom? Does he wanna be a pilot? I don't know, you need to discuss these things so that you know the trajectory of your life and you know where you're going. You have to have so many common ground factors so that when the times get rough and when the times like are a little bit shaky, you can go back to those main things that you guys are compatible on and that is what will carry through you sorry that is what will carry you through those hard times not love because 
I love my husband so much, but sometimes I don't like him. Let's be honest here. And in those times, I need somebody and something to remind me of, uh, 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 remember, this is your goal. This is why you marry him. This is what you need to remember in this moment. And that is so, so important. So number three, oh my goodness. This is, this is, if you're currently multitasking, stop what you're doing and listen to this number three. Pre-marital classes. If you have not done this already, what are you doing? You need guidance in this whole decision. You need clarity, you need the tools, you need the resources. Sign up for premarital classes. It doesn't have to be through your church. I'm sure that other organizations have it. My husband and I, we personally did it through church because we trusted the people there and we needed that godly guidance. But trust me, I'm sure there are so many more resources that you can look into. And premarital classes are just going to help you with that clean slate and understanding what is the foundation of our relationship and what is what does our connection look like? Why are we compatible? Why is this going to work out? Why th may this not work out? And it's going to point out those things that you need to be on the lookout for before you even get into it. Because you don't want to <laughs> not know that there are these issues there and they're just feeding and feeding and feeding off of all of these different situations that you're going to be faced with and then you're just like crap like who are you i don't even know who you are and that's just because you didn't take the time to see these yellow flags while you were just dating i'm not going to call them red flags because a lot of them probably won't be deal breakers but literally our pre metal class helped us lay out who's going to take out the trends the simple things who's going to take out the trash who's going to do the finances who's going to pay the bills but it also helped us talk about the deep things like insecurities and childhood issues and all of these different things that like you wouldn't normally talk about um unless there's somebody guiding you or a book in our case they gave us a booklet that we could go through and we could you know discuss the things that were in it and they had like talking points for us and i found that extremely helpful so i could not rave more about pre metal classes i think everybody needs to do it every couple should do it regardless of your age honestly um that kind of goes into the number four thing which is seek guidance and preferably not your parents. Um, Danny and I had a very interesting um, situation with our parents uh, when we got engaged. My parents were not so happy about us getting engaged. And so we didn't have the backing of my parents. Um, but if you wanna hear more about that, definitely let me know down below because I'd love to share that story. But for now, I'm just saying you need to seek guidance and it may not be your parents because your parents are always gonna be biased. Danny's parents are gonna have his best interest at hand and my parents are gonna have mine in, at best hand and that's bias. You need somebody who barely knows either one of you or knows both of you guys, knows both of your good parts, both of your bad parts, loves you guys both the same, isn't a part of the family and is not biased to sit there and listen to things and help you get through even arguments that you may have before. Because there are arguments that are gonna happen before you get married, when you're engaged and when whatever, when you wanna take off the ring and be like, you know what, I'm done for. Number five, which also would help if you're in premarital classes is communicate your expectations and boundaries up front you need to let them know what your deal breakers are what your red flags are and what are the things you're going to be looking out for and the things that you're not going to tolerate those things are going to help you have a marriage that is successful because he's not going to overstep your boundaries she's not going to overstep your boundaries because you've already communicated those and if they do then they may not be the person for you you should not have to repeat your boundaries over and over and over again if you establish those from the beginning then more than likely they're going to respect those because they're going to love you and you should get you should tell them those boundaries not out of like i'm trying to restrict you but i'm trying to protect myself and some boundaries may look like we will not raise our voice at each other we will not yell that is a boundary that i do not want to cross we will not call each other names we will not curse at each other do you know what i mean like so many different things that you could come up with beforehand so that you guys can be successful in your arguments and your in your debates that you may have and make sure that like they're not overstepping something that they can't come back from and that will hurt you so badly that you just can't forgive them for ultimately your job is to forgive over and over and over again that's what marriage is marriage is 
a huge pot of forgiveness and acceptance grace and love and if you're going on this journey soon i really encourage you and i pray that god gives you the strengths and the tool and tools and the people in your life to help you get through this because it's not going to be easy it's not going to be all roses i know you guys love each other but it's going to be hard but i also believe that it can be so successful i know that 50 percent of marriages end in divorce and i do not believe that if you put in the work i do not believe that it it's gonna be you and it's not gonna be me. I really, really, really wanna get down to the reason of why that is and I want to I want to be the odds. I wanna beat the odds and I want to do what is not being done. So if you loved this video, please, please, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you like content like this, please let me know. If you like my new background, let me know. Um, I'm probably gonna be doing it here from now on. Um, I'm so thankful to have this community grow as it is. And if you wanna see anything else from me, just let me know. But please, before you leave, don't forget to say hey and introduce yourself. That's the most important thing. I don't want zombies following me. I want to actually get to know you guys. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next time.